Tonight's topic is called World War Three on the Brink. World War Three on the Brink. World War Three on the Brink. That's tonight's topic. So pay close attention. All right. World War Three on the Brink. Let's open up with the book of Matthew. Okay. Let's open up with the book. Let's open up with the book of Matthew, chapter 26. Matthew, chapter 26, verse 41. Read that. Matthew, chapter 26, verse 41. Come on. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So now this is Christ speaking. He says, watch and pray. So we are commanded to watch what's going on in the news as well as pray to the most High God for his vengeance on our enemies. So Christ commanded us, he says, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. So when you see what's going on in the news, you're supposed to what? You're supposed to understand the things that are, the prophets left before, the, the prophets of old left for us. So we may, we may understand the times that we are living in, that we are in the last day. So pay close attention. Read that again, verse 41. Matthew chapter 26, verse 41. Mm -hmm. But and pray that ye enter not into temptation. Come on. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. The flesh is weak. Watch this. Give me the book of Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 5, verse 15. It says, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. Watch what's going on in the news. That's why I tell you, brothers, always check out the news. You understand? Sisters, too. Read the news, watch the news, see what's going on in the world and filter that with the scriptures. Ecclesiastes in the Apocrypha, chapter 5, verse 15. Read that. Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, verse 15. Come on. Be not ignorant of anything in a great matter or small. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, don't be ignorant of anything in a great matter or a small. Anything small, anything big, don't be ignorant of any of it. Why? Because the what? The time is drawing near. We are, we are, we are, the most High God is getting ready to develop, deliver his children out of slavery, out of captivity, out of oppression. So it would behoove you to pay, to, to pay attention to what's going on around you and on the news. Okay, give me that in First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Let's start at verse 1. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 1. You know what? No. Give me First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 1. That's what I want. Chapter 5, verse 1. First Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 1. Mm -hmm. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. So the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul is commanding us to do what? To measure the time. To be weary of the time. Because the time is at hand. The time is short. Okay, read that again. First Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 1. Mm -hmm. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. He says, ye have no need that I write unto you. Why? Because it's already written that we must be mindful of the time. We must watch as well as pray. For what? We must pray for the Lord to bring forth vengeance on our enemies. Because I know in the church, they don't teach that. But Christ commanded us to pray for vengeance. You understand? Watch this. Second Ezra chapter 9 verse 1. Second Ezra chapter 9 verse 1. Second Ezra chapter 9 verse 1. Read. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. What did he say? Measure thou the time diligently in itself. So Christ commanded us here. He says, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. Meaning be mindful of the time. Watch as well as pray. Go ahead. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before. Come on. Then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Meaning the most high God will begin to visit the, to visit the world which he made. How does the Lord visit the earth? He brings forth what? Destruction. He brings forth earth, earthquakes, storms, so on and so forth. Diseases, viruses. You understand? That's how the Most High God makes his second coming. He starts with plagues, destruction, and confusion on earth. That's what's going on right now. Read that again, verse 2. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 2. Then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest 
will begin to visit the world which he made. Next verse. When there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world. He says uproars of the people in the world. You see, like when you look at China, you look at India, you look at Europe, you look at Sweden, you understand? You look at here in South Africa, people are in an uproar. You understand? They want to overthrow the governments on earth. Why? Because the people are frustrated because of the things that be going on. All of that is what? That's the plan of the Most High. Go ahead. Then shalt thou well understand that the Most High speak of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. Meaning from the time of Genesis, the Lord already declared what will happen in the last days at the beginning. That's what the Lord did. So we must be mindful of what's going on. We must be aware of what time we're living in. So don't sleep, brothers and sisters. Don't be asleep. Read that verse again. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 4. Then shalt thou well understand that the Most High speak of those things from the days that were before thee, even from mm -hmm. the beginning. Even from the beginning. Now go back to uh, first, second, uh, uh, first Thessalonians chapter 5, read verse 1 and 2 now. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. Come on. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. You see what he's saying right there? He says, for yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as, cometh as a thief in the night. A thief does not announce when they are coming to rob your house. They just rock up unannounced. That's how the Lord will make his second entrance. You understand? But we must look out. We must watch the news to see the signs of the second coming of the Lord. You understand? And you, in order for you to see that, you must be in this Bible. You must study on a daily basis. You must sink your spirit in this book so you can see things happening through your spiritual eyes. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of John 14, verse 15 now. John chapter 14, verse 15. Because Christ commanded, Christ told us, he promised that, listen, I will be that comforter in you. I'll comfort you. And I will declare unto you the things which will what? Which will happen before the second coming. Watch this. John chapter 14, verse 15. Read. John chapter 14, verse 15. Come on. If ye love me, keep my commandments. That's the stipulation. If you love me, keep my commandments. That's how you love the Most High. You must keep his laws. Read. And I will pray, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. Come on. That he may abide with you forever. So now, this is a conditional statement. Verse 15 says, if ye love me, keep my commandments. Then verse 16 says, and, and I will pray the Father, that he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. So the only time when, the, when Christ will pray to the Father to give you a comforter, is if you observe verse 15. Read verse 15 again. John chapter 4, chapter 14, verse 15. Come on. If you love me, keep my commandments. You see that thing? If you love me, keep my commandments. Then when you keep God's commandments, then that's the time when Christ will pray to the Father to send you the comforter. Read on. And I will pray the Father, and he will, and he shall give you another comforter. Come on. That he may that he may abide with you forever. Read. Even the spirit of truth. Even the what? Even the spirit of truth. So the comforter is the spirit of truth. The comforter is the spirit of truth. Hold that. Give me the book of Psalms 119 verse 142. Let's understand what is the truth. You understand? The spirit of truth. What is that? The spirit of truth. The comforter is the spirit of truth. Psalms chapter 119, verse 142. Read that. Psalms chapter 119, verse 142. Come on. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Mm -hmm. And thy law is the truth. What is the truth? And thy law is the truth. And thy law is the truth. So God's laws is the truth. So let's go back to John chapter 14, verse 17 again. John chapter 14, verse 17. Read. Even the spirit of truth. <laughs> Even the spirit of truth, meaning the law. So the comforter is God's laws. Go ahead. Whom the world cannot receive. Uh -huh. Because it seeth him not. 
Read. Neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So now the world cannot receive the, the comforter. The comforter, is, which is what? The Holy Ghost. They, the world can't receive that. Why? Because they are not keeping the commandments. They are not keeping God's commandments. The comforter is the Spirit of Christ. Read on, verse 18. Watch this. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. You see what Christ is saying? He says, I. You see what he's saying? I. I, meaning himself. He says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So who's the comforter? The Spirit of Christ. That's the comforter. The Spirit of Christ is the comforter. It's not that priest that died uh, from IPCC church. It does not the comforter. The comforter is Jesus the Christ. Not Muruti Wako IPCC. Mm -mm. Read that again. Verse 18. John chapter 14, verse 18. I will Read. not leave you comfortless. I will come mm -hmm. to you. You see what Christ is saying? I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Give me the book of Isaiah 51, verse 12. Isaiah 51 verse 12. Let's get some more on that. Because this is the, the, the comforter is the spirit of Christ. Okay. Isaiah 51 verse 12. Isaiah chapter 51 verse 12. Come on. I, even I, am he that comforted you. You see that thing? This is Christ speaking through Isaiah. He says, I, even I, am he that comforted you. Read that again. I need some power in this thing. Come on. Isaiah chapter 51 verse 12. I, Read. even I, am he that comforted you. Read. Who art thou that thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die? Come on. And of, and of the son of man which shall be made as grass. So now he's saying, who, he says, who art thou that, should, that, that, that you shouldest be afraid of a man that, should, that shall die? Meaning he's going to drop dead. He says, don't be afraid of a man. That also he's going to go back to the dust. That's what he's saying. But Christ is saying, he will, he's the comforter. He's the one that comforted us. So we'll go back to John 14 verse 18. Now we have a better understanding. Okay. John 14 verse 18. Read that again. John chapter 14 verse 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to mm -hmm. you. He says, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Christ is that spirit, is that spirit of truth. The comforter is the spirit of Christ. Jump down to verse 26. This is what the spirit of Christ will come. This is how the spirit of Christ is going to comfort us in the last days. Read that. Verse 26 now. John chapter 14, verse 26. But the comforter, come on. which is the Holy Ghost. Which the my comforter, which is the what? Which is the Holy Ghost. The comforter, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. So the comforter we know is the spirit of Christ. The spirit of truth in verse 17. He says the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Let's get some more. Give me that in Acts 751. The Holy Ghost. Because this is, this is what's causing the greatest confusion in the Christian church. Uh, people be jumping up and down. You understand? Speaking a language that they didn't even understand. It's not even a language. Talking about that God, the Holy Ghost. Let's see what the Holy Ghost is. Read that. Acts 751. Acts chapter 7, verse 51. Read. Stiff-necked and uncircumcised in hearts and ears. You Read. Do always resist the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. As your fathers did, so do ye. So now he's saying we do always resist the Holy Ghost as our fathers did in the wilderness, so do we, the children, this day. 2021. Jump down to verse 53 now. Acts chapter 7 verse 53. Who have received Wait. the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept mm -hmm. it. You see that thing? So the Holy Ghost in 51 is explained in verse 53. The Holy Ghost is the laws of God, which was given out by the prophets. You understand? The Holy Ghost is God's commandments, God's laws. So go back to John 14 verse 26 again. John chapter 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, mm -hmm. he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. 
whatsoever he I have said. So, so the Comforter will teach us all things and bring all things to our remembrance. So now we need to understand what will what what, what are things that needs to be brought to our remembrance because that means there's something we forgot that needs to be brought to our remembrance. That's how we are going to be comforted in these last days. We forgot things. Give me Jeremiah 17 verse 4. Okay. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 4. This is what we have forgotten. That the spirit of Christ will bring to our remembrance in these last days. Jeremiah 17 verse 4. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 4. Come on. And thou even thyself shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave. Come on. And I will... And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. Mm -hmm. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. So now the Lord is telling Jeremiah, say, even thyself shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. So what did we forget? We forgot our heritage. Because in our heritage, there lies our identity. Our identity is found in our heritage. So what is the heritage that God gave unto us that we forgot this day? Give me that in Sarah 24. Sarah 24, verse 23. Ecclesiasticus. In the Apocrypha, chapter 24, verse 23. This is the heritage that God gave unto us which we forgot. Okay? Read that. Ecclesiastes, chapter 24, verse 23. Come All on. these things are the book of the covenant of the Most High God. Even the law which Moses commanded for an heritage unto the congregation of Jacob. You see that thing? So the heritage that we forgot, that we discontinued from, was God's laws. God's commandments is our heritage. How sisters must dress, how men must conduct themselves, grow a beard on your face, put fringes on, observe the Sabbath, observe the Feast of Pentecost, um, the Feast of Passover, the Feast of Tabernacles, and so forth. You understand? Get married. No girlfriends get all of that's our heritage. We discontinued from that. You understand? We have forgotten that we are the children of Israel. That's what the Spirit of Christ will do for us in the last days. That's why the Lord was telling Jeremiah, even you, Jeremiah, you will discontinue from your heritage. Not only to Jeremiah, but to the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. <laughs> we, would, we would discontinue from our heritage. Go back to Jeremiah now, 17 verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 4 And thou even thyself shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not for ye have kindled a fire in mine anger which shall burn forever So now the laws of God is, is what will bring to our remembrance what we forgot we have forgotten our history our culture, our identity we don't remember that we're the children of Israel. We don't remember that the reason why we're at the bottom, the reason why we're saving slavery, we are oppressed, apartheid, racism, colonization, you understand, is because we broke the commandments of the Most High. We discontinued from our heritage. That is what the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Christ, will bring to our remembrance in these last days. Okay? Go back to John 14. You know what? Give me 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 46. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 46. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 46. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry uh -huh. them away captives unto the land of the enemy, far or near. So now, this is King Solomon praying here. He says, if they sin against thee, who's the they? The children of Israel. For there is no man that sinneth not, because all Israel, we broke God's laws. And thou be angry with them. When we went into slavery, that's when the Lord was angry with us. Okay? And deliver them to the enemy. We was delivered to our enemies on slave ships. Forced migration, colonization, and so forth. Okay? So that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy far or near far from jerusalem near to jerusalem we were carried away captives far from our homeland we are not in our homeland right now you understand come on verse 47 
verse 47. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves in the if land... If they shall what? Whether they, if they shall bethink themselves. It says, it says, if we shall bethink ourselves, we should remember who we are. That's the same thing that Christ said. It says, the, the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, you understand? Which my Father shall send in my name, shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Meaning you will remember who you are. That's what King Solomon is saying here. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves, what's going to cause us to bethink ourselves? The comforter. The spirit of Christ will remind us who we are, that we are the children of Israel. Go ahead. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves in the land, whether they were carried captives and repent and make supplication and unto thee. So, hold on. We must repent in the lands of our enemies. South Africa is one of those, is one of the lands of our enemies where we were scattered. You understand? To come here to pay for what? To serve our prison sentence. Because we broke the laws of God. So that's what King Solomon is, is, is saying here. You understand? Read that part again. If they shall what? If they, if they shall bethink themselves in the land whither they were carried captives and repent. Mm -hmm. and, and make repent. sense. When we remember, hold on. When we remember ourselves, according to what we read in John 14, 26, you understand? It says, we're going to what? We're going to repent. We are going to turn away from the evils that we are doing in the world and come back into this Bible and apply all the laws that are written in this book. Go ahead. And repent. And do what? And, make, and repent. And repent. Come on. And make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captive, saved. Okay, First Kings chapter 8, verse 46. Pick it up from there. First book of Kings chapter 8, verse 46. If they Mark. sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, mm -hmm. and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy, far or near. So now King Solomon, as he's praying, he's what? He's seeing that we will go into captivity in the last days. So as he's seeing that we're going to go into slavery, guess what he's praying? He's praying, says, if we get delivered to the hands of our enemies and we are carried away captives unto their lands, far from Jerusalem or near to Jerusalem. Go ahead. This is what must what? This is what would happen when, once we are in the lands of our enemies. Not back then during the time of King Solomon, but now in the last days. Go ahead. Verse 47. Yes. Verse 47. Yes. Mark. If they shall bethink themselves, yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land whither they were carried captives and repent mm -hmm. and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captives, saying, We have sinned and mm -hmm. have done perversion. We, we have committed wickedness. We have committed wickedness. That's what the Lord wants from us. The most high God doesn't want us to make excuses for our sins. We, he doesn't want us to be hiding our sins. No, he wants us to confess our sins. The only way you can know you're in the midst of sin, the laws of God must be taught to you. You understand? That's the only time when the Lord is going to hear your prayers. Watch this. Hosea 5 verse 15. This is what the Lord commanded us. And we must do it now before the second coming of our Lord and Savior, the Christ. Hosea chapter 5 verse 15. Read that. The book of Hosea chapter 5 verse 15. Read. I will go. And return to my place. Come on. Till they acknowledge their offense. And till they what? Faith. Acknowledge their offense. Till we, the children of Israel, acknowledge our offenses. We must acknowledge that we have sinned and we have done perversely. We have committed wickedness. Go ahead. Till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. The face of the Most High God is this Bible. We must seek his face. Go ahead. In their affliction, they will seek me early. Because right now we are afflicted. That's why we are seeking the Lord now. Because we are in trouble. We are oppressed. We are depressed. You understand? We are catching hell every day from sunup to sundown. The black men, the black women, we are catching hell out here. That's why now we are seeking the most High God. And the only way the Lord will receive us, we must acknowledge our offenses and begin to repent. You understand? 
to keep God's commandments in the faith of his son. Give me First Peter chapter 1 verse 10. First Peter chapter 1 verse 10. First book of Peter chapter 1 verse 10. Mm -hmm. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently. Who prophesied oh. of the grace that should come unto you. So our forefathers, the prophets, they prophesied what? He says they prophesied of the grace that should come unto us. Hold that. Give me John 117. The prophets of old, Moses, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Nahum, Habakkuk, you understand? Nehemiah, Ezra, they all prophesied of what? Of the grace that should come unto us. Give me that thing. John the chapter 1, verse 17. 1, 17. Come on. For the law was given by Moses. Mm -hmm. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The law was given by Moses, but grace and the law with which what the truth is, God's commandments came by Jesus Christ. So what was the prophet prophesying about? They were prophesying about what? Christ, that Christ would be on the scene. And when he made his first coming, his first uh, entrance, that's when during the time of the Romans. Now, also, the pro not only did the prophets prophesy about Christ that is going to be nailed on the cross for the 12 tribes of Israel, but also that he will make his second coming. So what we are about to read, we are going to go into the second coming of the Lord, that before he makes his second coming, what needs to happen? And that's why we, what we're going to go over this day. The things that are happening in the news, this is preparation for the second coming of Christ. Read on, verse 11. First book of Peter, chapter 1, verse 11. Read. Searching what? Oh, what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was seen in, the, which was in them, did signify. The Spirit of Christ. So the Spirit of Christ was in the prophets. The Spirit of Christ was, is what? Is the comforter. The Spirit of Christ was in the prophets from the time of Adam, by the way. Adam was a prophet. Okay, read that part again. Searching what? Searching what? Or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify? Come on. When he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ mm -hmm. and the glory that should follow. So now the prophets, they prophesied about this, the sufferings of Christ. Isaiah prophesied about that. Moses prophesied about that. You understand? The prophets prophesied about the sufferings of Christ. So guess what? Not only did they, they, they prophesy about the, the sufferings of Christ, but also they prophesied about the glory that should follow. That's talking about what? The second coming of the Lord. You understand? Watch this. Let's go to the book of Isaiah 53 real quick. Okay? I'm not going to spend some too much time on it, but I just want to show you as an example that uh, Isaiah prophesied about the second coming, of, I mean, the sufferings of Christ. Okay? Isaiah chapter 53 and verse, let's start at verse 2. Isaiah 53, verse 2. The book is there, chapter 53, verse 2. Mm -hmm. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. Talking about Christ. Go ahead. And as a root out of a dry ground. The dry ground is us, if you read Ezekiel 37. The value of dry bones, that's talking about us. Come on. He hath no form, no comeliness. Come on. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. You see that thing, meaning what? He's not going to look like Denzel Washington. He's, he's going to look like Mr. T. That's what he's saying right there. Go ahead. Verse 3. He is despised and rejected of men. Meaning the scribes and Pharisees and our forefathers that despised him. Go ahead. A man of sorrows. A man of sorrows because Israel made him sick. Go ahead. And acquainted with grief. Acqu and acquainted with grief. Go ahead, come on. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. Come on. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. So now Isaiah is going to explain to us why he was acquainted with grief, and he was a man of sorrows. Next verse. Go ahead. Surely he hath borne our griefs. You see that thing? He was carrying our griefs. Go ahead. And carried our sorrows. And carried our sorrows because the evils that we've done. Go ahead. Yet we did esteem him stricken, mm -hmm. smitten, God, and afflicted. 
You see that thing? That's what our forefathers and foremothers were saying. They were saying, because Isaiah is seeing what's going to happen during the time of the Romans when Christ is going to go through this for the 12 tribes of Israel. You understand? Because our forefathers were saying, no, the reason why he's going through this is because he's wicked as hell. But Isaiah is going to explain to us that's not the case. Come on. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Now he comes to tell you, listen, he the was reason why he's going through, hold on. The reason why he's going all through this is because he was wounded for our transgressions. The 12 tribes of Israel, the evils that we did, he took on all the transgressions of Israel. Come on. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was bruised for our iniquities, our sins. Come on. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. The chastisement of our peace, meaning the peace that we must have between us and the Most High. He's the one that's responsible for it. Isaiah is telling us he's going to be the one that will bring peace between us and the Father. Go ahead. And with his stripes, we are healed. And with his stripes, we are healed. Jump down to verse 10 now. Watch this. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Mm -hmm. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. How was he bruised? Give me that in Acts chapter 5 verse 30. Acts chapter 5 is there. I'm just giving you an example of when it says the spirit of Christ which was in them did signify the sufferings of Christ. That's what we are going over here. Okay? Acts chapter 5 is 30. Read that. The book of Acts chapter 5 is 30. Come on. The God of our Father raised up Jesus mm -hmm. whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Come on. He made God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So now Christ was slain on a tree. You know, he was slain and hanged on a tree to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. That's how he was bruised for Israel. So go back to Isaiah 53 now verse 10 again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 10. Read. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Mm -hmm. He hath put him to grief. Read. When thou, shalt, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. You see that thing? His soul was made as an offering for the sins of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Come on. He, he shall see his seed. Mm-hmm. He shall prolong his days. Come on. And the pleasures and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Read. He shall see the travail of his soul. Mm -hmm. And shall be satisfied. The Lord will be the most like God was satisfied with what Christ did for us. Come on. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. You see that thing? By his knowledge, meaning Christ's knowledge, shall my righteous servant, that's talk about Christ, justify many. Who's the many? The 12 tribes of Israel. Come on. For he shall bear their iniquities. For he shall bear their iniquities. So that's what is to go back to now. Go back to First Peter chapter 1, verse 11. First book of Peter chapter 1, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Searching what? Oh, what manner of time the spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify. Come on. When he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ. That's what we read in Isaiah. That should follow. So it says, we, when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ. That's what we read in Isaiah 53, verse 2 down. You understand? Come on. And the what? And the glory that should follow. And the glory that should follow. Watch this. We're going to deal with before the glory, the, before the, the glory of the kingdom will be upon us, something must happen. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Psalms 145 verse 11. Psalms 145 verse 11. Watch this. The book of Psalms chapter 145 verse 11. Come on. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom mm. and, thy talk, and talk of thy power. He says, they, who's the day? Jump up to verse 10. Let's see who's the day that shall talk of the, the glory of thy kingdom. Verse 10. The book of Psalms, chapter 145, verse 10. 
All thy Mark. works shall praise thee. Mm -hmm. All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. And thy saints shall bless thee. So the they in verse 11 is talking about the saints. Okay, verse 11 now, come on. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom mm -hmm. and talk of thy power. They shall speak of the saints, shall speak of the glory of the kingdom of the Most High and talk of his power. Come on. To make known to the sons of men his mighty acts mm -hmm. and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. And the glorious majesty of his kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The glorious majesty of the kingdom of the Most High God is at hand. When you see us gathering together, that's the testimony to that thing. Go ahead. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Mm -hmm. And thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. Thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. So what we are reading here, this is that when it says the glory, that's the glory of the kingdom. The glory that should follow is making reference to the glory of the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven that shall be established upon earth. But before the kingdom of heaven is established upon earth, something must happen. Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah 34, verse 16. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. Watch this. The book of Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. Read. Seek me out of the book of the Lord and read. Mm -hmm. No one of you shall fail. None shall None of the promises. None of the prophecies in this Bible are going to fail. Come on. And none shall want to mate. Read. For my mouth it had commanded, mm -hmm. and his spirit, and his spirit it had gathered them. So the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord had gathered the words that are in this book. And the spirit of the Lord is what was in the prophets for the prophets to prophesy of what the sufferings that Christ will go through and the glory sh which shall follow. Right now, the sufferings that Christ went through, we've passed that already. Now we're waiting for the glory that will what? That will, will follow. Right now, we are in the middle of that. You understand? We are in the middle of that. We are in the middle of the, 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 the sufferings of Christ has happened. Now we are waiting for the glory that must follow. You understand? And for the, that glory, before it must be upon us, Something must happen. Watch this. Give me Second Ezra chapter fifteen verse one. This is one of my favorite chapters. Second Ezra chapter fifteen verse one. Watch this. Second book of Ezra this. chapter fifteen. I love this chapter. Right. This chapter right here. I love this chapter. Watch this. Second Ezra fifteen verse one. Come on. Second book of Ezra chapter fifteen verse one. Come on. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people. The words the prof of prophecy. The words of what? Which I will put in my mouth. The words of prophecy. The words of prophecy. So it looks like there's a delay also on your side. The words of prophecy, which are what? Which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. So the most like God, remember it says the spirit of Christ, which was in the prophets. So this is the prophet Ezra. The spirit of Christ is in him to prophesy of the things that should come to pass. Isaiah also prophesied about what? The second coming of the Lord and the glory that should follow. You understand? Read that again, verse 1. Second book of Ezra, chapter 15, verse 1. Behold, Read. speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which mm -hmm. I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. So now the words of prophecy and is what was... Hold on. Wait, wait. Come on. It says, the words of prophecy, the words of prophecy is what was put in the mouth of the prophets. The words of prophecy. Watch this. Give me Revelation 10, verse 11. Revelation chapter 10, verse 11. I need you to follow me. Revelation 10, verse 11. Read that. The book of Revelation chapter 10, verse 11. Come on. And they had a king over them. No, no. Which Revelation, hold on. Revelation chapter 10, verse 11. Come on. The book of Revelation chapter 10, verse 11. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples. So now the most high God is speaking. Hold on. The Lord is speaking to John now. John the Revelator. It says, and he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again. Remember, John the Revelator, he wrote the book of Revelation. You understand? And he was, this is prophecy. 
They call it the book of the, Apoc the apocalypse. Okay? So, but the Lord is telling John, he says, listen, thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. What is this telling you? It's telling you that John the Revelator is back. You understand? He's back. Okay? He's, that's what he's letting you know. He's letting you know right there. He says, thou must prophesy again. When? The last days. John the Revelator is back. Read that again, verse 11. The, the book of Revelation, of the 10, verse 11. And he said unto me, thou must prophesy again mm -hmm. before many peoples and nations Read. and tongues and kings. You see that thing? That's what we are doing this day, brothers. That's, what we're, that's what's going on. That's what's going down this day. We are prophesying again because we are the prophets of all back on the earth. Understand that thing. Watch this. Give me Jeremiah 28, verse 8. Jeremiah chapter 28 and verse 8. Watch this. Remember, the spirit of Christ which was in them did what? Did signify of the things that should come, the glory that should follow, and the sufferings of Christ. Okay, we've already gone past the sufferings of Christ. Now we're waiting for the glory that must follow. How did the prophets know? Because the spirit of Christ was in the prophets. Jeremiah 28 verse 8. Watch this. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 28, verse 8. Mm -hmm. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied mm -hmm. both against many countries against, and against great against, kingdoms. Against, against, against. Come on, I need you to follow me. Against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. That is what we are prophesying when we are on the streets. The destruction of Babylon the Great, America. All these kingdoms that support America, they are going to be destroyed as well. But America is going to be wiped out from the face of the planet Earth. That saith the Lord. Read that again, verse 8. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 8, verse 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. That's what, we are, that's what we are teaching right now. We are teaching what we are prophesying against great kingdoms. America is a great kingdom. Europe is a great kingdom. China is a great kingdom and so forth. Of war. That's why you see there's wars going on right now. And of evil. You understand? The preparation for the evil day that's coming. You understand? And of pestilence. The coronavirus. That's a pestilence. Okay, watch this. Go back to Second Esther now, chapter fifteen, verse one again. Second Book of Esther, chapter fifteen, verse one. Mm -hmm. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. Which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord, because the Spirit of Christ was in the prophets. Okay, come on. And cause them to be written in paper. The paper is the Bible. For they and cause them, them. Hold on. And cause them to be written in paper. For they are faithful and true. Meaning they are going to come to pass. There is no if, but, or maybe about it. The prophecies that are written in this Bible. All of them, they are going to come to pass. Read verse 2 again. Second book of Ezra, chapter 15, verse 2. And cause them to be written in paper. For they are faithful and true. For they are what? For they are faithful and true. They are faithful and true, meaning they are going to come to pass. You understand? Watch this. Give me, jump down to verse 10. Second Ezra 15, verse 10 now. Second book of Ezra chapter 15, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. My people. Read that again. Second book of Ezra chapter 15, verse 10. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. He says, My people are led as a flock to the slaughter. Watch this. Give me Second Chronicles chapter 6, verse 6. Second Chronicles chapter 6, verse 6. He says, My people are what? My people is led as a flock to the slaughter. Let's see who God's people are. Second Chronicles chapter 6, verse 6. Watch this. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 6, verse 6. Read. But I have chosen Jerusalem. 
mm -hmm. that my name might be day. Come on. I have chosen David to be over my people Israel. Read that again. Read it right. Come on. Come on. Read verse 6 again. Second book of Chronicles of the 6 verse 6. But I have chosen Jerusalem that my name might be they. And have chosen David to be over my people Israel. You see that thing? And have chosen David to be over my people Israel. So go back to 2 Ezra now, 15 verse 10. Again. 2 Book of Ezra chapter 15 verse 10. Read. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. My people are led as a flock to the slaughter. So the children of Israel, we are led as a flock to the slaughter. What is the slaughter? The other nations, because they are slaughtering us. They are devouring us. You understand? The slaughterhouses were Christianity, politics, Islam, Buddhism. You understand? Egyptology, democracy, so on and so forth. That's the, those are the slaughterhouses. Okay, read that part again. The second book of Ezra, 15 verse 10. Behold. My people is led as a flock to the slaughter. Read. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. So the Lord is saying he's not going to allow us to dwell in the land of Egypt no more. That's why it says, I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. Remember, this is Esdras. This is the prophet Esdras. This is during the Persian Empire. You understand? Long before, long, we have long left Egypt. It's been many, many thousands of years since we've left Egypt. Now, at this point, now Ezra is mentioning Egypt. You see that thing? Obviously, he's not talking about the Egypt of the of Pharaoh, ancient Egypt. He's talking about something else. Okay, read that part again, verse 10. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 10. Behold. My people is laid as a flock to the slaughter. Mm -hmm. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. Watch this. Give me Deuteronomy 28 verse 68 now. Let's understand what Ezra is talking about when he says, I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 68. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 68. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. You see that thing? It says, the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Because the first time, give me that in Exodus 1 and 1. This is when it happens. This is when it happened the first time. When it says again, let's, let's understand when it happened the first time. Exodus 1 verse 1. The book of Exodus chapter 1 verse 1. Read. Now, these are the names of the children of Israel, which came into Egypt. Read that part again. Now, these are the names of the children of Israel, which came into Egypt. You see that thing? The names of the children of Israel, which came into Egypt. That was the first time. You understand? The first time. Come on. Every man and his household came with Jacob. You see that thing? That was the first time we came into Egypt. Go back now. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So now Moses is talking about something different now. The Lord will bring you into Egypt again. So this Egypt here is not talking about the physical Egypt. Is talk about spiritual Egypt. Hold this. Give me Exodus 20 verse 2. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You see that thing? Out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So Egypt is synonymous with what? Bondage, slavery, captivity. So go back to Deuteronomy 28, verse 68 again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. 
So the Lord will bring us into spiritual, into Egypt again. So this Egypt that Moses is talking about is not the Egypt that was mentioned in Exodus, the first chapter. Watch this. This Egypt right here, this is spiritual Egypt. Give me Revelation chapter 11, verse 8. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 8. Watch this. Revelation chapter 11, verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city. Their dead bodies, their dead bodies shall lie in the street of, a, of the great city. So the, the subject matter is about the Israelites. It says, their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city. Give me that in Proverbs 21, verse 16. Their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city. Proverbs 21, verse 16. Mm -hmm. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. You see that thing? The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding. We have wandered out of the way of understanding. The way of understanding on how to conduct ourselves is written in this Bible. We have wandered out, meaning we rejected God's commandments. Now we are in the congregation of the dead, spiritually dead. You understand? Our spirit is, is asleep, unconscious, spiritually dead. So go back to where he was at, Revelation 11 verse 8. Revelation chapter 11 verse 8. Come on. And their dead bodies shall lie their in what? the streets of... And their dead bodies... Their dead bodies, their spiritually dead bodies, shall what? Shall lie in the streets of the great city. Shall lie in the street of the great city. That great city is what? That great city is America, Babylon the Great. Today is called the United States of America. That great city is talking about America. Go ahead. Which spiritually is called which Sodom and... Which spiritually... Which spiritually, spiritually, spiritually. So this is not physical. This is not physical, what we're about to read here. He says, this place, this city, you understand? He says, our dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. This great city spiritually is called what? Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. So this place, America, is called Sodom and Egypt. Sodom and Egypt. So when it says Sodom, what's happening? Or well, because what America has done is that it's pushed homosexual activity throughout the whole earth. South Africa was the fifth country in the world to legalize same-sex relations. You understand? And the first in the in the continent of Africa. South Africa was the first in the continent, was the fifth in the world to do this thing. So what are they? Who are they following? They are following America. That great city, Babylon. Read that part again. Which spiritually is called what? Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. It's called Sodom and Egypt. Egypt. You see that part right there? So right now, Ezra, in 2nd Ezra 15 verse 10, he was talking about spiritual Egypt. Then Just look at America. Just look at how America deals. You understand? Look at the things that, I mean, there's a lot of clues when you look at America. Just watch the news. You understand? Look at the dollar bill. It's got the, the pyramid on it. It's got the all-seeing eye of Ra. You see that thing? When you, it's got um, that they took from Egypt, you understand? They've got all the stuff of Egypt that they stole and they brought them to America. Because America will be what? Spiritual Egypt. And guess what? The children of Israel also was taken to what? During the transatlantic slave trade, North, Central, and South America. The bulk, the, the bulk of it is over there, but the remnant is here on the continent of Africa and everywhere else. You understand? Read that part again. Which spiritually is what? Which spiritually is called Sodom and Come Egypt. On. Mm -hmm. Come on. We also, our Lord was crucified. He says, where also our Lord was crucified because the image of Christ was crucified, you understand? And his teachings was crucified. How was that done? Through the, dog, the, the philosophy called Christianity. That's how the Lord was crucified. You understand? His teachings and his image was crucified. Watch this. Go back to where was that? Second Ezra now. Chapter 15. 
But I will bring them with a mighty hand mm -hmm. and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all the land thereof. You see, it's going to smite plagues as before and will destroy spiritual Egypt, Babylon the Great. Okay, second Ezra 15, verse 12. Come on. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 12. Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that God shall bring upon it. So it says, Egypt shall mourn. Spiritual Egypt is going to mourn. Come on. They that till the ground shall mourn, for their seed shall fail. Through the blasting and hail, and with a fearful constellation. With a fearful constellation, that's going to look about the missiles. That's how Egypt is going to mourn through thermonuclear. Thermo it says, and with a fearful constellation, launched towards Babylon the Great. Come on. Okay. Okay, because you are there's a lot of de there's a lot of delays. Second Ezra Second 15. Ezra 15. Verse 14. Read that. Second Poker Ezra 15, verse 14. Read. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. He says, Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. Give me that in Revelation 12, verse 12. Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. He says, war to the world and them that dwell therein. Watch this. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 12. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth he hath but a short time. So now this devil is talking about the white man. He knows that he's got a short time. You understand? That's why it's war to the world and them that dwell therein. The devil has come down unto you because he knoweth, but because he had a what? But a short time. That's why, because how does he know that he's got but a short time? Because he know he can see the Israelites waking up. That's how he knows that he's got a short time. Because when he sees us waking up, he knows that any time the big boom can happen. But he cannot stop the inevitable. Although they are trying, they are not going to stop that thing. Go back to 2nd Ezra chapter 4, 15. 2nd Ezra 15, verse 15 now. Come on. 2nd book of Ezra chapter 15, verse 15. Read. For the sword of their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up to against another, and swords in their hands. So it says, one people, okay, let me read for a little bit. Uh, Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 15, it says, For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up to fight against another, and swords in their hands. So these people that shall stand to fight against another, that's the nations. But there are particular nations that are going to start the war, you understand, to bring America into World War III. They will draw him in. They will draw America out and into the war. You understand? Verse 16, it says, For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the cause of their actions shall stand in their power. So sedition, that goes into what? That goes into um, civilians trying to overthrow the government. You saw during the time when Donald Trump was the president, um, when they stormed the U.S. Capitol building, it was all over the news, okay? Um let me just share my screen real quick. All right. Because we must understand what, what Ezra is saying here in verse 16. When he says, they shall be sedition among men. Okay. And invading one another. They shall not regard their kings. That's talk about that goes into their presidents and so forth. All right. Let me share my screen so we can see uh, what Ezra is actually talking about. It's not just what's it, what, what happened in the U.S., but What's okay. happening all over the world? All right. Um, let me just up my 
volume a little bit. Okay, so this is when Donald Trump was inviting the US Capitol riot. You understand? Because Donald Trump always knew was he was on his way out. You understand? Watch this. What is up to Congress to confront this egregious assault on our democracy? And after this, we're going to walk down, and I'll be there with you. We're going to walk down. We're going to walk down anyone you want, but I think right here, we're going to walk down to the Capitol. And we're going to cheer on our brave senators and congressmen and women. And we're probably not going to be cheering so much for some of them. Because you'll never take back our country with weakness. You, have you, see what, you hear what he said? You're not going to take back our country with weakness. Because you'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. Okay, that's it on that. Shortly after that, this happened. Okay, this is now uh, the Edomite storming the U.S. Capitol. For four years, we have witnessed turmoil in America, but nothing quite like this. The pro-Trump crowd fought with the police, trying to break through their lines intoxicated by the unlikely prospect of reversing America's election outcome. We watched as the standoff continued for at least an hour. Tear gas canisters were fired from the very stage on which Joe Biden will be inaugurated. Look at this. If we were doing this, but the Capitol Hill they were just going to bring like a uh, machine gun and just wipe us all out. This is exactly what was feared, but in no way is this a surprise. It has been fueled by the president's rhetoric, and it's increasingly clear this election has not healed the wounds. It has simply amplified them. We followed the aggrieved and infuriated Trump supporters as they stormed the building. I swear to see it here, and they just sent me there. Through broken windows, and doors they had forced open. I mean, look at what they are doing. We're not going to watch the whole seven minutes, but I just want to show you what Ezra is talking about here is what we are seeing right here. Okay, sedition among men. They're going to want to try to overthrow the government. Okay. And for a few heady moments, they felt they had won a precious victory. We were now in the very heart of the congressional building. You hear that? Read that. Um, could you read that, um, Soldier John, verse 16 again? Second Book of Ezra, chapter 15, verse 16. For they shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings or princes, and the cause of their actions shall stand in their power. It says, and the cause of their actions shall stand in their power. That's why they're saying they work for us. That's why we are doing this. Okay? In Congress itself, because they work for us. They don't get to steal it from us. They don't get to tell us we didn't see what we saw. We respect the law. We were good people. The government did this to us. We were normal, good, law-abiding citizens. And you guys did this to us. We want our country back. We are protesting for our freedom right now. That's the difference. What's the purpose of storming Congress? How do I know that? They reached and entered the Speaker's office itself. Although Nancy Pelosi and other lawmakers had already been evacuated to safety. 
Here you go. Here you go, brother. As we filmed, protesters tore down Pelosi's nameplate. And so here we are right now inside the halls of Congress. This is exactly what so many anticipated. And yet the Capitol Hill police are doing their best, but failing to control the situation. We all know that they changed the rules mid-game, and they're not being held accountable. And that's a shame. What's your message to the Capitol Hill police and to lawmakers here? This is our country. This is our house. That's it. This is our house. This is our country. This is our country. Inside the chamber itself, there was chaos. Agents hastily blocking the doors with furniture to keep the protesters out. Officers ready to open fire as a last resort. In the galleries, people took shelter. Just look at this. The great constitutional showdown. And they are not going to be held accountable. Madam Speaker and members of Congress, pursuant to the Constitution and the laws of the United States. A little earlier, the passions and America's political schism were on display as Trump loyalists acted to stop the certification. I rise for myself and 60 of my colleagues to object to the counting of the electoral ballots from Arizona. But I would urge to both sides perhaps a bit less certitude and a bit more recognition that we are gathered at a time when democracy is in crisis. But the okay, that's it on that, all right? Um, okay, read verse 16 again. Second book of Ezra, chapter 15, verse 16. For they shall be sedition among men and invading one another. And they shall not regard their kings nor princes. And the cause of the action shall stand in their power. The cause of their actions shall stand in their power. That's why none of them were held accountable. Go ahead, verse 17. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. He says a man shall desire to go into a city and will not be able. Meaning what? They will what? They will, um, they will enact travel restrictions that will make sure that people don't travel from one country to another. That has been happening for a while now. Even It's still happening. Now, they, even with the third wave coming up, same thing going to happen again as well. All right. Um, let's see. Right, so let's start with... All right, so let's start with the big story that we're tracking on Beyond This Arm. British Prime Min Health Minister, rather, Matt Hancock, has said that another strain of COVID-19 has been detected in the United Kingdom, which reportedly, he claims, originated from South Africa. Now, according to Hancock, the recent developments are highly concerning, as the new variant is said to be highly transmissible and appears to have mutated even further. Across the country, cases have risen 57% in the last week. The average COVID hospital admissions are 1,909 a day. That's the highest figure since mid-April. There are 18,943 people in hospital with coronavirus right now. That's almost as many as there were at the peak. And Yesterday, there were 691 deaths reported. That's 691 people who have died just before Christmas. And our hearts go out to their families, their loved ones, as with all who died from this horrible disease. I know the pain that this causes. So against this backdrop of rising infections, rising hospitalizations, and rising numbers of people dying from coronavirus, it is absolutely vital that we act. Now, there are two mutant strains of the coronavirus that are circulating worldwide, at least two that have been reported very prominently as having mutated recently into something that is said to be much more severe. The first one is said to have originated within the United Kingdom after mutation and another from South Africa. The United Kingdom has been struck by both of these strains, forcing the government to impose even tougher restrictions. Mm. 
that all travelers from South Africa coming to the United Kingdom in the last two weeks have been asked to isolate immediately. Some developments about another new strain of this virus. Of course, the fight against the virus is a global effort, and we're constantly vigilant and looking around the world. And as part of our surveillance, and thanks to the impressive genomic capability of the South Africans, we've detected two cases of another new variant of coronavirus here in the UK. Both are cases, both are contacts of cases who have traveled from South Africa over the past few weeks. All right, now scientists know very little about this new variant, but it is said to be much more infectious than the original strain. They've also observed a higher incidence rate amongst children, which means that kids are more vulnerable to this mutated virus. Now, all this confusion and chaos in the United Kingdom is, of course, spreading a bit like wildfire. The country has reported nearly 40,000 cases in a single day, and over 740 deaths have been recorded, which is the highest since the month of April. Now, what the governments of other nations have failed to do so far with China, they're doing that again with Britain. Britain now stands cut off from the world. At least about 50 nations have reportedly banned travel from the United Kingdom. And that's you see that part right there? At least about 50 have banned travel from other countries. 50 nations have reportedly banned travel from the United Kingdom and that too in a matter of few days. Mm. And okay, that's it on that. So, read that again, verse 17. Second book, Ezra 15 to 17. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. A man shall desire to go into a city and will not be able because of what? They will, they will what? They will institute travel restrictions so that you cannot go to the UK, the US, so on and so forth. Okay? And during the time of the corona, you couldn't go anywhere. You were in your house. But that's what he's talking about here. He's talking about in terms of what? One country to another. A province to another, not going to the shop, no, not that. Okay, come on, verse 18. For because of the pride, the cities shall be troubled. Mm -hmm. The houses, the houses shall be destroyed, and men and men shall be afraid. It says, be, it says, for because of their pride, the cities shall be troubled. Because of their pride, the cities shall be troubled. Remember what we read in verse 16. Verse 16, Esau is responsible for this thing. And Esau is at the forefront of doing all these evils that are happening on this earth. But what we saw in verse 16 regarding the U.S. Capitol building, you see here it says, uh, for because of their pride, the cities shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. Watch this. Give me the book of Obadiah, okay? Obadiah chapter 1. Because of their pride, the cities shall be troubled. Watch this. Obadiah verse 1. The book of Obadiah chapter 1 verse 1. Come on. The vision of Obadiah. Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. Concerning who? We have Edom. Concerning Edom. I need you to read the right pronoun here. Concerning who? Concerning Edom. Concerning Edom. Come on. We have heard a rumor from the Lord. Come on. And an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Mm -hmm. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. So there's going to be an, an ambassador among the heathen that is going to go. You know what? We need to go to war with this, with America right here. We need to go to war with Edom. Okay, come on. Verse 2. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Three. Thou art greatly despised. You see that thing says Edom is greatly despised. The reason why they 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 are under the hand of America is because they are afraid of them. Because America has got is got what nuclear capability. When it comes to warfare, you cannot touch the white man. It's written in the Bible. You when it comes to warfare, listen. That's why Christ himself has to come down here and destroy this man. Come on. The pride of thine heart had deceived thee. You see that part right there? The pride of thine heart has deceived thee. That's why we read in 2 Ezra. It says, because of their pride, the pride of thine heart has deceived thee. Go ahead. The pride of thine heart had deceived thee. 
Though thou dwellest in the, in the cliffs of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? You see that thing? He says, the pride of thine heart is deceit thee. Thou that dwellest in the cleft of the rock, whose habitation is high, because they love high-rise buildings. But the key here is the pride of thine heart has deceived thee. They've got a lot of pride. You understand? Watch this. Go back to Second Ezra, chapter 15, verse 18. Read that again. Second book of Ezra, chapter 15, verse 18. Read. For because of their pride, the cities shall be troubled. Mm -hmm. The houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. He says, houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. Come on, verse 19, watch this. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, mm -hmm. but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Now, what you want to notice with this verse, it says, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword. So imagine, right? Imagine you have a sword in your hand. You are going to destroy a house. Does that make sense? No, sir. So what is, what, what is this sword talking about here? This is a missile. Okay? This sword here is talking about a missile. Read verse 19 again. Second book of Ezra, chapter 15, verse 19. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy the houses with the sword. Mm -hmm. Come on. And spoil the goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. So now what we want to deal with, we want to deal with verse 18 and 19. It says, because of their pride, their cities shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. So verse 18 and 19 is talking about what? The pride of Esau and he's going he's gonna to destroy houses with his soul. And he's going to spoil their goods because of what? Lack of bread and for great tribulation. Watch this. Um, let's go to the next video. Okay. What's going on in the Middle East? Okay. Between Israel and Gaza. What's happening in Gaza and in Israel, between Hamas and Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, okay? Now you see the missile, um, the explosive just went off, right? That's a strike, that's, a, that's, a, that's an air strike that was dropped. But what you wanna notice is that, you see, read verse 19 again. Second book of Ezra, chapter 15, verse 19. Read. A man shall have, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall Come destroy on. the houses with the sword. Okay. Um, second Ezra chapter 15, verse 19. It says, A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. How hard is that? Come on, brothers. Okay. So, what you are seeing here, um, this is Hamas, which is an Arab, is Ishmael, fighting with Amalek. You understand Jewish in our land, so they launched missiles into Jerusalem and they responded. What the explosion that you just saw that was Israel's response to Hamas 
to Hamas's attack, quote unquote, because Hamas launched an attack, but they what they invaded the mosque, you understand, and they were destroying the mosque. That's why Hamas launched an attack into Jerusalem. But they are painting Hamas as the boogeyman. But when it says a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, remember what's happening in Israel. Give me that in Zechariah 12, Zechariah chapter 12, verse 3. Watch this. Because in the land of Israel, there's two nations occupying that land. You've got the Palestinians, you've got Amalek, and both of which don't belong to that land. That, belongs to, that land belongs to us, but they are fighting over that land, okay? Zechariah 12, verse 3. I need you to stay focused, okay? Zechariah 12, verse 3. The book of Zechariah 12, verse 3. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. So now, you see what the Lord is saying? It says, that, uh, it says in that day will I make Jerusalem a barren some stones for all people. The people that are burying themselves with Jerusalem is who? The Palestinians with Ishmael and Amalek, Jewish. You understand? They are burying themselves with Jerusalem. He says, all that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces. So all the people of the earth be gathered together against us. He said, because all nations are gathered together against us. That's why you have the UN. You understand? They are gathered to the League of Nations. So all these organizations were created against us. You understand? But there's two major nations in Israel, Ishmael and Amalek. They are burying themselves with the land of Jerusalem. Go back to Second Chronicles chapter six verse six, because this is what the Lord said. You understand? They are burying themselves with the land that don't belong to them. Watch this. Second Chronicles six verse six. Read that. Second Book of Chronicles chapter six verse six. But I have chosen Jerusalem, that my name might be there, and have chosen David to be over my people Israel. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, I have chosen Jerusalem that my name might be there. You see that land right there? Listen, that's the, that, that's the, land, that's the holy land. That's the most high God's favorite land right there. So now they have appointed themselves over that land. They are burying themselves with that land and the people of the land have been scattered among all nations on earth. So the Lord is telling you, he's saying, he says, I have chosen Jerusalem that my name might be there. And have chosen David to be over my people, Israel. Watch this. Um, let's let's keep playing. Hmm. There. You see that part right there? That's the part that Ezra is talking about. Remember, uh, the Palestinians and Amalek, they are neighbors. You understand? They are neighbors. That's what it says, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword. That's what you are seeing here. There's the mosque right there. You see the mosque? This is the building that they destroyed. You understand? Read that, read that. Second Ezra 15, verse 19 again. Second book of Ezra, chapter 15, verse 19. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword. Read. And spoil their good because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Because guess what? When they destroy these houses, um, what happened to the to the food? What happened to their possessions? What happened to the things that they own? Their assets, their clothes, everything is destroyed there. You understand? They destroyed their houses with the sword. You understand? That's what's going on here. Because um, in 1967, when they had that treaty to say, you know what, we're going to share the land, you understand, after the six-day war that they had with Israel, they, there was a treaty that you're going to take the, uh, the West Bank, you're going to take the East. But now Israel has been taking more and more territory, and they're still doing it today. What, they are, what, what this is doing, what, this is, what was going on here is 
Israel wants the territory that they just launched uh, nuclear missiles into. They want that land because they want to move other Edomites in that land. That's what's going on. So this whole thing is about the land. Give me that in my caption, this one. They want access to that land to kick the Palestinians out. Because if you notice that, um, if you watch the news, you'll see that our there was a sister that uh, attended with us. This was a while back. This is many, couple of years back. And this sister, she was part of the, the, the Israelites that left the US and went to, to Israel. Gimona Israel, and she attended a couple of a uh, couple of classes with us, and she attended no more. And they are now giving them sixty days notice to leave Israel. They are kicking them out. They've been there since the sixties, I think. You understand? They've been there since, since the sixties because they don't believe on Christ. So they believe that during that time when they were allowed to go. Um, to Israel. They thought that was the time when the Lord would allow them to go back to the homeland. But they took it literal, but it was spiritual. You understand? Now, they've been there since the 60s. Now, today, they're giving them 60 days to leave Israel. Now, on the other hand, Israel is launching what? Missiles into Palestinian territory in Gaza, in Sheikh Jarrah, to make sure that they also, what they, but they, they get out, so that Amalek can occupy more land. That's the whole point of this. Okay, read that. Micah 2 verse 1. The book of Micah, chapter 2, verse 1. Read. Work to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of the hand. Because guess what? I'm, I remember the, the Amalek, which is the, the Jewish people, they are supported by America. So they have power. You understand? They have power. Read on. There's two. Watch this. And they covered fields and take them by violence and houses and they take them away. So they shall oppress a man in his house, even a man in his heritage. Okay. Do you have your glasses on? Did you get your glasses? Michael 2 verse 2. And they covered fields and take them by violence. That's what you are seeing here with this video. You understand? They covered fields because they want more land. That's why they want to kick the Palestinians out and take them by violence. That's what you are seeing here. Violence, destruction, you understand? Bombs and houses. That's why now, where's the people going to sleep? We're not feeling so. I'm not feeling sorry for Ishmael. But what I want to show you here is that that is what you are seeing. That's what's going on. That's what Ezra and Michael are talking about because of the spirit of Christ which was in them. And take them away. So they oppress the man in his house even a man and his heritage. So that's what they are doing to the Palestinians over there. Because both of them, they are burying themselves with Jerusalem. And the Lord says he will cut them in pieces. That's where the most high God is, is what? Is, uh, is bringing death and destruction over there because of that thing. Okay, let's play on. Look at that. You see that thing? There it is right there. It says the occupants were warned in advance by Israel to evacuate. Just look at that. It says houses will be destroyed with the storm. That's what you're seeing. The Bible is a true book. So don't sleep on this thing. Don't sleep. Okay, that's it on that. Go back to 2nd Ezra chapter 15, verse 19. Read that again. 2nd book of Ezra chapter 15, verse 19. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy the houses with the sword and spoil the goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. So now, what we, what we, whatever is explaining is what we were watching. What, you see that thing? Next verse. Come on. Behold, saith God, I will call together all the kings of the earth to, reven to reverence me, which are from the rising of the sun, from the south, from the east, and Lebanon, and Lebanon's. And Libanus, Libanus, Libanus is Lebanon, Libanus, come on. From the east and Libanus, to turn themselves one against another and repay things that they have done to them. 
So now what you are seeing here is that Ezra is now revealing unto us, this is now the beginning of World War III. It says, Behold, saith God, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me. For before this can happen, this what we are seeing here with but the Palestinians and Israel, this needs to happen. But the kings of the main king that must be drawn out into war is America. America must be, must be drawn out and be brought into the war. Watch this. Give me the book of Jeremiah 49 verse 12. Okay, Jeremiah chapter, before, before you get me that, give me Zechariah 9 and 6. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 6. Watch this. The book of Zechariah chapter 9, verse 6. Read. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of the, of the Philistines. So the Philistine here is talking about the Palestinians. He says, and a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. Who's the bastard that's dwelling in Ashdod? Ashdod is modern day Tel Aviv. Modern day Tel Aviv, that's Ashdod. You understand? That's the West Bank. Who's taking the West Bank? That's talking about the Israelis, the white Edomite Israelis, Amalek. They are the bastards. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. That's the Palestinians. Watch this. Give me Jeremiah now, 49 verse 12. Jeremiah 49 verse 20. The book of Jeremiah chapter 49 verse 20. Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord, that he had taken against Edom. He had done what? And his purposes. That he had taken against Edom. Yes, the Lord has taken against Edom. So this message is against Edom. Come on. And his purposes that he had purposed against the inhabitants of Timon. Timon does Germany. Come on. Surely, surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Mm -hmm. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. Okay, watch this. Let me read it. Jeremiah 49 verse 20 says, Therefore hear the counsel of the Lord that he had taken against Edom. So now Jeremiah is going to reveal to us the counsel that the Lord has taken against Edom and his purposes that he has purposed against the inhabitants of Timon. Remember the prime minister of Germany, which was a woman, she said Israel has the right to defend itself. You understand? That's Timon. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Who's the least of the flock? The bastards that dwell in Ashdod. The least of the flock is Amalek. Amalek is the least of the flock because it's, it's a small country. They were put there in 1948. That's why it says the least of the flock. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. So Amalek, which is what? The Jewish people in Israel, they are going to draw America out and bring America into war. Because what's going on right now is that the Arab world, Ishmael's brethren, they are watching. You understand? The Arab League, the whole nation of Ishmael, they are all watching what's going on in Gaza. All of them, they are watching. What do you think is going to happen? They are all going to come together to go to war. Guess who's going to be drawn out? America will be drawn out into that war. What is that called? The beginning of World War III. Okay, verse 20. It says, Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord that he has taken against Edom and his purposes that he has purposed against the inhabitants of Timon. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitation desolate with them. You see that part right there? Now go back to 2nd Ezra now. 2nd Ezra 15 verse 20. 2nd Ezra 15 verse 20. Behold, saith God, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me, which are from the rising of the sun, from the south, from the east, and Lebanon to turn themselves one against another and repay the things that they have done to them. The them is us. The them is us. The Lord is saying he's going to bring forth vengeance on these nations that they've done evil against us. But the Lord is saying here, says, he's going to call together all the kings of the earth to reverence him. So before this can happen, guess what needs to happen? 
was going on in Israel today, was going on between Gaza and Israel, these are the type of wars that need to pop up in order to do what? In order to incite World War III. You understand? These are the things that need to happen right now. These, so these things is necessary for them to go down. Okay, watch this. Um, let's go to the book of Joel now. Let's go, give me, before you go, yeah, let's go to Joel. Give me Joel chapter 3, verse 1. Joel chapter 3, verse 1. It says, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me, meaning they're going to bow, and the Lord will plead with them. Okay, Joel chapter 3, starting verse 1. The book of Joel chapter 3, verse 1. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah in Jerusalem. He says, the Lord says he will deliver us out of captivity. That's what he's saying right there. He says, I will bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, all 12. Go ahead. I will also gather all nations and bring them and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. And will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel. Come on. And they will get it among the nations and part of my land. So now, those, what, the same, what Joel is saying is the same thing that Ezra is saying right there. He says, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me. So right here he's saying, I will, gather, I will also gather all nations and bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. The valley of Jehoshaphat, that's the Middle East. And will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Because they are burying themselves with what? With Jerusalem. You understand? Give me Isaiah 66 verse 15. It says, he will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel. Give me that in Isaiah 66 verse 15. Isaiah. This is how the Lord is going to plead with his nations that he's going to gather together. To reverence him. Isaiah 66, verse 15. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verses 15. Read. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. So the most high God, Christ is bringing death and destruction on this earth, nuclear warfare. Come on. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. Come on. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. You see what he's saying? It says, for by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. That's the nation that the Lord is going to call in the valley of Jehoshaphat. The valley of Jehoshaphat is the valley of decision. The, the decision that the Lord is going to make concerning the people that came against us, his children. That's how the Lord is going to plead with them. He's not going to sit down to negotiate. No. That the, Lord, the way the Lord is going to plead with the nation is through fire and sword, death and destruction. That's how the Lord will plead with his nation. Go back to Joel now, 3, verse 2 again. The book of Joel, chapter 3, verse 2. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Read. And will plead with them they for my people and for my heritage Israel. Come on. Whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. So now there's these nations that the Lord is going to plead with. They have what? They have scattered. They have scattered us among the nations. They have, and, and what? And they have parted our land. Watch this. Give me that in uh, Deuteronomy 28, verse 64. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. The Lord is going to plead with all these nations that have scattered us and that parted our land. Watch this. Deuteronomy 28, verse 64. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. Mm -hmm. From one end of the earth, even unto the other. And they, thou shalt serve the gods, which neither thou nor thy father have known, even wood and stone. You see, this is the prophecy. Moses is prophesying that we would be scattered among all nations on earth, from one end of the, of the earth even unto the other. 
So the most high God is tell is, is command is prophesying. You understand? He put the spirit upon Joel to prophesy the things that the Lord would do to his nation that would what that would scatter us among them. Slavery, colonization, and forced migration. That's how they did it. They are still doing it this day. Okay. Go back to Joel 3, verse 2 again. The book of Joel, chapter 3, verse 2. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among all among the nations and have parted my land. So they parted the land of Israel as well. They parted the land. Give me that in Ezekiel. Give me Ezekiel chapter 36. Okay, Ezekiel 36 verse 5. Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 5. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 5. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia, which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds to cast it out for a prey, so now, what is happening here, so you see the main heathen, the residue of the heathen, the least of the flock, and against all Idumia, which have appointed my land into their possession. They parted the land of Jerusalem. So they didn't do it alone, though. You understand? They did it, the Palestinians, because the Palestinians, they took over since from the time of the Ottoman Turks. And then 1948, the British government put those bastards over there in our land. You understand? Watch this. Give me Micah 2 verse 4 now. Micah chapter 2 verse 4. Micah 2 and verse 4. The book of Micah, Micah chapter 2 verse 4. Okay. Come on. In that day shall one take up a parable against you and lament with a doleful lamentation and say, we be utterly spoiled. He had changed the portion of my people. He had done what? How it, he had changed the portion of my people. Because the, the portion, the most like God's portion is his people, the 12 tribes of Israel. We are the Lord's portion. So he says he had changed the portion of my people. How did he do it? Go ahead. How had he removed it from me? Turning away, he had divided our fields. You see that thing? They parted the land of Israel. They parted the land of Israel. Turning away, he has divided our field. The land. They took the land. Okay? Go back to Joel now. Joel 3 verse 3. The book of Joel chapter 3 verse 3. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot and sold the girl for wine. That they might drink. So now you see what they did. You know, when they parted our land, it says they what? They've cast lots for my people. They set up what slave auction blocks. Like you see what's happening, what was happening in Cape Town, in Ezekiel Museum. Today is called it the Museum, but it was that was a slave court where they brought the slaves, our forefathers and foremothers, to be sold. You understand? It says they've cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. So let's deal with that when it says, and have given a boy for an harlot. So when you look at this, um, that right there, this is a movie called Mendingo. Okay. Okay. This is a movie called Mendingo. It's a very old movie. You see what this white woman is doing? Can you brother see that? See the screen? Hello? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you see the white yes, woman? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. You see, that's, that's when it says they've given a boy for an harness. So they would what? They would have, they would, they would take the strongest slaves, the one with big muscles, they would choose the strongest females 
black women, whether it doesn't matter whether it's your sister, whether it's your cousin, whether it's your mother, it don't matter. And they would what? They would breed. They would breed the slaves to create more slaves on the plantation. So now what they would do is, this is what they would do. They would, this is how they would check how, 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 if he's tagging. You see what the white woman is doing? Right there. Mm. That's what they were doing. Okay? Read that part again, verse 3. The book of Joel, chapter 3, verse 3. Read. And they've cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. He says, and sold a girl for wine. And sold a girl for wine. This is a picture from 12, 12, yeah, 12 years of place. You see that thing? You see that sister? That sister right there. He says, and, and sold a girl for wine. So what they would do is they would take the sisters and the white men would rape them. You see how you see, look at look at how she is, look at her face. And this is the man right here. You understand? This brother right here is not gonna do nothing. That's what it means when it says, and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. They would rape our sisters. You understand? Not only did they rape our sisters, they raped the men too. They raped the, the, the fathers in front of the in front of the, the wife and the children. The men, the Edomites, the Spaniards, particularly the Spaniards, they would rape the black men in front of the wife and the children. It does not even begin to explain the level of nastiness this man is walking around with. You cannot make this stuff up. Okay? We, we, uh, Joel 3 verse 4. The book of Joel chapter 3 verse 4. Yea, and what have they, yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, mm -hmm. and all the coast of Palestine? Will ye render me a recompense? And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? So now, now what you see what's going on? Now he's naming the nations that was responsible for this during this time. He says, what have you to do with me, O Tyree and Zidon? This is going into what? These are Hamites. Tyree and Zidon, these are Ham, these are Hamitic tribes. You understand? Tyree and Zidon. And all the coasts of Palestine, the Ottoman Empire, the Palestinians. Uh, I have a book here. Okay. Uh, that book. The scramble for Africa. Now, when you go into this book, uh, it's called The Scramble for Africa by Thomas Peckenham. Okay, I'm gonna go to page. So it's from 1876 to 1912. So when you go inside this book, right? On page 23, it says, uh, introduction, it says, the scramble for Africa bewildered everyone, from the humblest African peasant to the master statements of the age, Lord Salisbury and Prince Bismarck. Bismarck, that, that demon, okay? Um, it says, ever since Roman times, Europe had been nibbling at the mysterious continent to the south. The mysterious continent, talk about Africa, by the way. So he says, if there were treasures, they were buried in African soil. So they know where the treasures are buried on the African continent because they read Genesis, the second chapter. But beyond the trading post on the coastal fringe and strategically important colonies in Algeria and South Africa, Europe saw no reason to intervene. Suddenly, in half a, in half a generation, the scramble gave Europe virtually the whole continent including 30 new colonies and protectorates, 10 million square miles of new territory, and 110 million days new subjects, that's us, acquired by one method or another. Africa was sliced up like a cake. The peace is swallowed by five rival nations, Germany, Italy, Portugal, France, and Britain, with Spain taking some of the scraps. You understand? Your Mozambique and all that. And Britain and France were in each other's throats. At the center exploiting the, the rivalry stood one enigmatic individual and self styled philanthropist, controlling the heart of the continent, Leopold II, king of the Belgians. Okay? 
let's see next page hmm. yes on page 24 it says in may 1873 david livingstone he was he was an explorer the celebrated missionary explorer died at ilala in the unknown heart of the continent and his son's right body was brought home to be buried in westminster abbey from his translated tomb under the name livingstone sounded a call for a worldwide crusade to open up Africa. The new slave trade, organized by Swahili and Arabs in East Africa. You see that part right there? You know what the Swahili tribes are? In Kenya. In Kenya. The Maasai. You ever seen the Maasai? Uh -huh, that's them, the Maasai. And Arabs in East Africa. So, Joel 3 verse 4 again. The book of Joel 3 verse 4. Mm -hmm. Yay, and what have you to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? Come on. And all the coast of Palestine? Will you render me a recompense? And if you recompense me, swiftly and speedily will I return your recompense upon your own head. Meaning the Lord says he's going to bring forth judgment on them. So the, the, the Hamites, Nilotic, Okay, and the Palestinians, because the Palestinians, one of feeling sorry, I'm not feeling sorry for each man at all. Okay, it says, and all the coasts of Palestine, will he render me a recompense? The Lord is going to recompense them double unto what they've done for. You understand? Verse 5, come on. Because ye have taken my silver and my gold, right? and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. So that the, the, the Palestinians and the, the Hamites, you understand, they took our silver and our gold. You understand? Read on, verse 6. And the children also of Judah and the children also of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Christians, that ye might remove them far from the border. So now the Hamites and the Palestinians, they sold us to the Christians, meaning the white man. That's the Christians. You understand that you might remove them far from their border. We was removed from our homeland and we were taken to the east coast and the west coast. And guess what? We went to the south coast as well. That's where we are over here in South Africa this day. You understand? Go back to second Ezra. Okay, second Ezra chapter 15, verse 20. Again. Second book of Ezra, chapter 15, verse 20. Behold, saith God, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me, mm -hmm. which are from the rising of the sun, from the south, from the east, and Libanus, to turn themselves one against another and repay the things that they have done to them. So now the reason why these nations are going to war with one another is to what? Is to repay the things that they've done to us. The Lord is making them to fight one against another so they can destroy each other and he come and finishes their everything and deliver his children. That's the whole point of this. Give me Matthew 24, verse 7. Matthew chapter 24, verse 7. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 7. Read. Who nation? shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. You see that thing? It says nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. That's the same thing that Ezra is talking about. You understand? It says and to turn themselves one against another to repay the things that they've done to them. You understand? Read that again. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, 7. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. You see that thing? Because what we are reading is what is what Christ is prophesying about, is what Ezra was talking about. And that's what you are seeing now. You understand? What you are looking at right now. Is exactly what the Lord, that what the prophets prophesied, that this is what would happen in the last days. You understand? And guess what? Israel is going to draw America into war. 
That's what we are all waiting for. You understand? In the meantime, while we're waiting for that, we keep the commandments of the Most High. Okay? Watch this. Second Ezra chapter 15. Jump down to verse 28. Second Ezra 15 verse 28. Second book of Ezra chapter 15 verses 28. Behold, an horrible vision. Mm -hmm. And the appearance thereof from the east. So now it says, Ezra Where now is, hold on, wait, come on. It says, behold, an horrible vision. And, uh, and the appearance thereof from the east. That's the so-called Middle East. So Ezra is seeing this horrible vision in the, in the so-called Middle East. That's the value of Jehoshaphat. Okay, come on. Where the nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots, and the multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon earth, mm -hmm. that all they which hear, that all they which hear them may fear and tremble. So now when the dragons of Arabia speak about the Arabs now, now what you're looking at here on the screen is the Arab League. That's the nation, that's what? It says, the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots, meaning they are war machines. You understand? This is the Arab League right here. Read his name here. Starting with Algeria. The Arabs League. Algeria. Mm -hmm. Bahrain. Bahrain. Comoros. Djibouti. Mm -hmm. Egypt. Iraq. Jordan, Kuwait, Lebanon, Libya, Mauritania, Mauritania, mm -hmm. Morocco, Oman, Palestine, Qatar, mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia, Wait. Somalia, Sudan, Syria, Tunisia. United Arab Emirates, Yemen. You see that this, this is the Arab League. You understand? When he says he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren, these are all his brethren. So do you mean to tell me that the Arabs don't see what's going on right now? What Israel is doing? Of course they are watching. They are watching. You understand? They are watching. They are preparing for... They are preparing for war. The most, when it's time, the Lord will move the chest, will, will, will send the angel to put the spirit upon the Arabs to come together to go to war with Israel. That's what's coming. You understand? Watch this. Uh, jump down, read verse 30 now. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 30. Second book of Ezra, 15, verse 30. Also, the chameleons raging in wrath shall go forth as a wild boars of the wood. And with great power shall they come and join battle with them. And do what? And shall we? And join battle with them. So now, remember, the Arabs now, they are catching hell. It says the Kamenians are going to join together with the Arabs. Who's the good Kamenians? The Kamenians is Iranian. Iran. That's the Kamenians. He says they are raging in wrath. How, why would the Kamenians be raging in wrath to join themselves with the Arabs? Remember now what happened last year with Qasem Suleiman. That's the guy right there. Okay? Because Donald Trump uh, sent a drone strike and killed this man. You understand? That's why they are raging in wrath. Because the Lord will make sure that America um, America uh, is the one that's responsible for enraging coming the communion. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah before we play this. Give me Isaiah chapter 13, verse 17. Isaiah 13, verse 17. The book of Isaiah chapter 13, verse 17. Behold, I will stir up the means against thee, which shall not regard silver and as for gold. They shall not delight in it. You see that thing? So the Lord is saying he's going to stay against, he's going to stay up the knees against Babylon. You understand? He's going to stay up the knees against Babylon. The knees is the Chameleon, which is the Iranian. Those are the Persians. You understand? How, how is he going to do that? When they kill Qasem Sulaimani and they kill 
um, Moshe Bagrizade, the to- I read top nuclear scientists. They killed them recently. You understand? And now they are enraging. Um, uh, the Arabs are enraged because of what Israel has done. Guess what? They are watching. And everybody thinks that uh, they have forgotten. They have not forgotten what happened to Kassem Sulumani and Moshe Fakrizadeh. They have not forgotten. You understand? Um, On January 3rd, the United States launched a drone strike near the Baghdad International Airport in Iraq. It killed several Iraqi and Iranian military officials, including Iran's top commander named Qasem Soleimani. Moments later, Iran's supreme leader declared Soleimani a martyr and threatened severe revenge against the U.S. Over the next few days, hundreds of thousands of Iranians came out to mourn Soleimani's death. But Iran wasn't the only place where people took to the streets. There were demonstrations in Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, and Yemen. So you notice all these people that were that they have been mentioned here, they are all part of the Arab League. You see Saudi Arabia is here at the center, right? You see that, brothers and sisters? Yes, sir. So you've got Saudi Arabia, mm. Saudi Arabia, you've got Iraq, Syria, okay, you've got Lebanon over there, you've got Yemen, Oman, United Arab Emirates, that's it right there, UAE. So this, this is part of the Arab League. He says, Ishmael will dwell in the presence of all his brethren. These are all his brethren right here. You, know, you understand? They killed, they killed Iran's top military general. Now they are dealing with Saudi Arabia now. Israel is doing that. What do you think going to happen? <laughs> they are just going to sit there and just watch? No, 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 no. They are not going to just sit and watch. Is prophesied that they are going to come together. And that's already in the talks already. Okay, my baby is gonna die. So let me just click this. Meanwhile, Turkey is call- Listen to this. Meanwhile, Turkey is calling on Muslim nations to mobilize against Israel in the You see that thing? Uh, that's the Assyrian. Uh, uh, that's the Assyrian. That's the Assyrian says Turkey calls from all for Muslim nations to unite against Israel. Give me that in second as verse 15. Second Ezra 15, um, verse 31. Second book of Ezra 15, verse 31. And then shall the dragons have the upper hand, remembering their nature. And if they shall turn themselves, conspiring together in great power to persecute. I'm sorry, read verse 30 again. Verse 30. Second, Second Ezra. Ezra 15, verse 30. Mm-hmm. Also, the Armenians, raging in wrath, shall go forth as the wild bulls of the wood. And with great power shall they come and join battle with them, and shall lay waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. Read. And then shall the dragons have the upper hand, remembering their nature. Doing what? And if they shall turn to them, remembering their nature. It says they're gonna remember their nature. Okay. It says, and then it says, and then shall the dragons have the upper hand. That's what the Arabs now remembering their nature. And if they shall turn themselves, conspiring together in great power to persecute them. You see what the Arabs are gonna do? Ishmael is all gonna to come together. You understand? And who's draw, who's gonna draw America into war? The least of the flock. Amalek is going to do that thing. Amalek will draw America out and bring America into war. So all these Arab nations, they are all going to come together. Don't get it twisted. It's written, we're reading it right here. That's coming. You understand? This is a beautiful thing right here. You understand? Read verse 31 again. It makes my teeth white. Second book of Ezra, chapter 15, verse 31. And then shall the dragons have the upper hand remembering their nature mm-hmm. and if they shall turn themselves conspiring together in great power to persecute them so now what's going to happen is that they are all going to come together but what i wanted to do is i wanted to show some videos here um one second 
Let me see, because when you watch this type of videos, you should be flagging these videos. You know, YouTube flags these videos right here. So you have to log in. Okay, so uh, let's see the one that we were just watching, the video that we we're watching right now. Um, okay, so let's see. Let me share my screen. Hey, I don't know how to now include video now with the, uh, because it doesn't, I don't see the, the option here for it. Oh, well. You watch the video on your own. Just look for it on YouTube. Okay. Um, so read read verse thirty one for me again. Second book of Ezra, chapter fifteen, verse thirty one. And then shall the dragons have the upper hand, mm -hmm. remembering their nature. Remembering and if their they what? Shall turn themselves. Remembering their nature. Remembering their nature. So it says the Arabs are gonna remember their nature. Give me that in Genesis sixteen, verse eleven. He says the Arabs are going to remember their nature because right now, yes, you know, the Arabs are acting crazy, but they have not necessarily remembered their nature really the way that the Lord wants them to remember. They are going to remember it. Okay, that hasn't happened yet. Not really. So all these strapping bombs to themselves, we think that's extreme. No, 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 that's still coming. You're still going to, you're really going to see really the, the hecticness of Ishmael. We haven't seen it. It's still coming. Genesis 16, verse 11. Watch this. The book of Genesis, chapter 16, verse 11. Mm -hmm. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord had heard thy affliction. Read. And he will be a wild man. He will be a what? A wild man. So Ishmael is going to be a wild man because the name Ishmael means affliction heard. Affliction heard. Come on. He shall be a wild man. Mm -hmm. his, his hand will be against every man. He, against, no, just the, just the Jewish people. No, just Amalek. Against every man. So you see the Arabs now in the Kasis calling themselves my friend, my friend, my friend. He says against every man. That includes us in the Lokshins. Don't get it twisted. Okay, come on. And every man's hand against him. Mm. And he shall dwell in the presence of his brethren. He shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. That's what you just saw on that map. You understand? The Arab League, that's all the people that, all of, all of, all of those nations that you saw there, Obviously, there's black people in there which calling themselves Muslims and all that, but they are Israelites. But the point is, he will dwell in the presence of all his brethren, and Ishmael is going to remember his true nature. You understand? Right now, he's just getting like a, those bests of that wildness, that the wildness that is in him. But he doesn't truly understand it yet. The Lord is going to fully activate Ishmael. He has not done it. Ishmael is going to be activated. You understand? It's going to be like that call that comes in. Just, tur, tur. Hello, Mohammed, you are activated. <laughs> That's time. You see that thing? That's what's going to happen to Ishmael. He is going to be activated. Understand that? You understand? Ishmael is going to be activated fully the Lord, by the Lord. The Lord will activate him. You understand? Uh, go back to 2nd Ezra chapter 15, verse 31. Again. Second book of Ezra, chapter 15, verse 31. And then shall the dragons have the upper hand, remembering their nature. Uh -huh. And if they shall turn themselves, conspiring together in great power to persecute them. So they're going to persecute Israel. They are going to persecute Amalek. They are going to do that. And we want to see that thing go down. So once the Arab, because it might not be immediately as everyone is expecting, but the Lord is going to do it. It's going to take time. In the Lord's time, it will happen. But it will happen because what we're reading here, that's exactly what's coming. Teg is already calling all the Arab nations to come together against Israel. They're going to put their differences aside. They are all going to become together as one. 
Once that happens, listen, it's going to pop off. If all of them, when, no, not if, when all of them come together, really you're going to see some flames here. You're going to see some flames. Go back to Jeremiah 49 verse 20. I really love that verse. Okay, Jeremiah 49 verse 20. Read that thing again. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 49, verse 20. Come on. Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord, that he had taken against Edom, and his purposes, that he had purposed against the inhabitants of Timon. Surely, the least of the flock shall draw them out. No, maybe. Surely. He, Did he say maybe? Surely. Maybe. Surely. 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 Surely, the least of the flock shall draw them out. He's going to draw Edom out. Because Edom, those, Edom is the top. But you remember, like, he, the Edom that is sitting on top is America. Then he followed by Europe and Russia and all of that. But, the, the, but Amalek is going to draw America out. Surely, the least of the flock shall draw them out. You see that thing? That's prophecy right there. That what you are seeing, and, and when you look at the news right now, I was looking at the news on Reuters, and they were saying, no, the, the war is escalating. It, the war is escalating into a full-blown war. That's what they're saying. They say war is escalating into a full-blown war. What does that mean? That means Israel, Netanyahu, will continue to send missiles into uh, Gaza. And he's now destroying buildings full of people. What do you think? You think Ishmael is just going to sit there? You understand? And just do not be folding his arms. Saying Allah Akbar. No. He's going to push the button. So brothers and sisters, don't be sleeping up in here. You understand? Don't be sleeping up in here. All right? Um, if this electricity really messed me up. The network was really messing me up. I think I'm going to have to do, do this class again, okay? I might do it tomorrow or day after law as well, okay? Um, let's, I'm going to end the class right here. I'm going to end it here, all right? Um, let's go to, you know what? Get, get second as verse 15, verse 44. Um, second as verse 15, verse 44. Read verse 44. Second book, Ezra, so 15, verse 44. They shall come to her and besiege her. The, the hair is America. Come on. The star and all wrath shall they pour out upon her. Then shall the dust and smoke go up unto heaven. And all that they, they be about her shall bewail her. The hair is America. It says all they that be about America shall bewail her. They want to mourn for America's death and destruction. Give me that in Revelation 18, verse 9. Revelation chapter 18, verse 9. All they that be about America shall bewail her. The book of Revelation chapter 18, verse 9. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her shall and what lament shall bewail her shall bewail her so the kings of the earth that are eating with america that are at america's table he says shall bewail her that's the same thing that ezra is saying come on and lament for her mm -hmm. and when they shall see the smoke of her burning they shall see the smoke of her burning that's the same thing that ezra is saying come on Standing afar off to the fear of a torment. No, no, no. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment. Read that right. Come on. The book of Revelation 18 verse 10. Standing afar off for the fear of a torment. Saying, alas, alas, a great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. You see that thing? Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. It took, how, how long did it take them? It took them more than 400 years to build it. 
the Lord says, I'm going to destroy it in one hour. That's how you know you're dealing with the most high God. The most high God knows how to throw down. It took them more than 400 years to build the United States of America. The Lord says, don't worry. I'm going to wipe that thing out in one hour. Mm. That's some heavy stuff right there. Let's give the most high hand for that thing. All praises to the most high God for that thing. One mm -hmm. hour. He is going to wipe them out. That's a beautiful thing right there. I'm going to end that class on that note. Okay, with that, we say shalom. Let's break bread. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed to bread, and when he had given thanks, to break it and say, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most high hand for that.